light colored clothes, clothing. We want you to be aware that the missionaries here at Ebenezer Church are busy. Uh, not busy just doing busy work, but busy serving the Lord, serving other people. So if you have a need, you need prayer, you need counseling of any kind, just see one of the people in white or cream or light suit. <laughs> Since we, we do have a gentleman, a couple of gentlemen there, and um, they will attend to your need. Amen. So let us all stand, please. I want to read this scripture it says in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 it says but now thus says the Lord who created you O Jacob and he who formed you O Israel fear not for I have redeemed you I have called you by your name you are mine we are all God's children if you belong to him and let us stand before him right now and silence in honor of him You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. And oh. Yes, oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he tells me that I am his own. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Yes, you know my name. You know my name. Yes, you know my name. Yes, you know my name. And oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. And oh, how he tells me. And oh, how he tells me that I am his own. Hallelujah. That I am his own. One more time around. You know my name. You know my name. Hallelujah. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Hallelujah. You know my name. You know my name. And oh, how he walks with me. You know how he walks with me. And oh, how he talks with me. You know how he talks with me. And how he tells me. Oh, how he tells me that I am his own, that I am his own. Hallelujah. Lord, we stand beside, before you in all of all that you do, all that you have done. You know our names, one by one. You know all of our situations, Father God. And we praise you because of all the things that you've done. You sent your son Jesus here on this earth so that we can know you. You already knew us, but now we get to know you by your word. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Father God, we lift up this service to you. We put it in your hands. We invite the Holy Spirit to come in and teach us what we need to know. 
Lord God, we lift up the ones that may not be feeling well today. We ask that your Holy Spirit, that your healing virtue come in and help those that need help. Hallelujah. We praise you because we have the opportunity to glorify you in this service. And when we are filled up to overflowing, Lord God, help us to go out into the hedges and the highways and compel those that do not know you to enter into your gates and love you like we love you, Lord God. Father God, we ask that the word that goes forth today will fall on ears that are willing to do your work. Those that don't know you, Heavenly Father, let them come forward, Heavenly Father. Loose them and let them come and ask, what must I do to be saved? Father God, we ask blessings upon uh, Minister Hampton as he celebrates his birthday today. We thank you for his life and his strength in you. Father God, we love you and we count it joy to serve in your kingdom. These and all blessings we ask in the precious name of Jesus and the redeemed of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. That's a beautiful song if you think about the words. Uh, Mother Gladney was talking about it and Sister Bianca hummed it. I was humming and I said, oh, well, we have to do this for worship. Amen. That's how the Holy Spirit works. He brings all things together. Amen. This morning we will have our scripture reading, um, a responsive reading by Sister Betty Jenkins. Oh, scripture reading, I'm sorry. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make the boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt the name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked at him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. God's word for God's people. Amen. Y'all looking uh, revival glow. You got that revival glow, huh? <laughs> Revitalized, ready to hit the ground running. Amen. Thank you to Pastor Conrad Thomas. As it was stated before, oh, he brought the word, didn't he? Much for us to chew on and hit the ground running. We thank him for that. And understand this is his last day. He'll be traveling back, so we pray traveling mercies to you as well. Tuesday, we'll have our noonday. Monday, there's nothing going on. Amen? It's always good to take a break every day. All right, so Tuesday, we'll have our noonday Bible study in the fellowship hall from noon to 1245. We're studying why God allows his saints to suffer. Amen? Light refreshments will be served. All are invited. Later that day, the EBC Dance Ministry will have practice in the sanctuary at 6.30 p.m., anyone ages four to adult, male or female, are welcome to participate. Please contact a dance leader if you have any questions. Wednesday, we'll have our corporate prayer led by our deacons in the sanctuary at 6.30 p.m., followed by Bible study in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. We're studying the book of Numbers. We will learn how God deals with rebellion and complaining. All are welcome. Amen. 
Thursday, we'll have our deacons meeting in the fellowship hall at 6.30 p.m. On Saturday, we'll have our male chorus rehearsal at 9.30 a.m. and youth choir rehearsal at 11 a.m. Next Sunday, we'll have our 8 a.m. morning worship service, Sunday school at 9.45 for all ages, and 11 a.m. morning worship service. The youth choir will sing for both 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. service. Additional announcements, the Scholastic Committee is requesting all 2020 high school and first-time college graduates of fall 2019 and spring 2020 to confirm and or provide their information on the back youth bulletin board. If you have any questions, please, see, please contact Joretta Simmons or a Scholastic Committee member. So that bulletin board is back in the hall. The Ebenezer Women's Ministry presents a day treat, a one-day women's conf only conference on October 19th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The theme is A Wise Woman Builds Proverbs 14.1. And the keynote speaker will be Dr. Laverne Collins. Registration is full. Amen. Now at this time, Sister Gail Williams has an announcement. Good morning, family. Good morning. I have been diligently working on revival tapes, the, uh, CDs and DVDs. It's my goal to have them all ready by Tuesday noonday Bible study or Wednesday night Bible study. Um, there's still a sign-up sheet back in the media room, so it's not too late. And I'm not going to get discouraged because anytime there's a chance to get the word out, then that's okay with me. So they will be ready Tuesday and Wednesday and next Sunday. So if you still want it, Sign up. Amen. Thank you for that, Sister Williams. The Feed the Hungry Ministry is requesting all sizes of tennis shoes and or working boots for men. There were at least two men without shoes on the last feeding ministry. And it's encouraged that you also, if you got size 13 plus, they're welcome as well, all right? <laughs> we did say all sizes, but I understand that there were uh, people who were requesting that had size 13 in their home. Mark your calendar. Our annual Hallelujah Night will be in the church parking lot on Thursday, October 31st. We will have lots of food, games, animals, entertainment, fellowship, and fun. Additionally, we will host our annual EBC car show during Hallelujah Night. We all are aware of the destruction and devastation suffered in the Bahamas. Today, we will be taking a special offering for the Bahamas in their recovery efforts. Amen? I have a card for you. It says, thank you. It's the thoughtful things people do for us that make all the difference. Your thoughtfulness meant so much to me, and I just want you to know I truly appreciate it. This comes from the Mitchell family. Amen. Amen. Now, at this time, we'd like to recognize all visitors. If you're visiting with us this morning, we ask that you please stand and give us your name and any remarks you may have. Visitors, please stand. <laughs> Amen. Amen. both of you. We are delighted that you're here with us to worship the same awesome God of miracles and wonders that saw fit to heal a woman who bled for 12 years based on her faith, just touching the hem of his garment. Uh, so we are glad that you're here with us this morning. The doors of the church are always open to you. Amen. 
As a family in Christ, we like to celebrate our birthdays and anniversaries. So if it is your birthday today through next Saturday, birthday or anniversary, we ask that you please stand and be recognized. October the 4th, my wife and I will celebrate 22 years of marriage. So we had uh, nine birthdays, some of them uh, milestones, 60, right? 68, 77, they're looking good, aren't they? God is good, amen? So I, I pray that each of you that are having a birthday have a great birthday. I pray that each of you have a, a great day and a blessed week and to govern yourselves accordingly. As our officers come forth today, um, it was in the announcements, we're going to take up a special uh, offering for the Bahamas and their relief. Uh, many of you know the destruction and things have kind of quieted down, but uh, some members of Ebenezer have asked for an opportunity uh, to give. We did it in our 8 o'clock uh, service, so um, that basket, it'll be uh, right there in the middle. Uh, if you write any checks, um, you can write them to Ebenezer and we'll transfer them to that account uh, to get that out to the Bahamas. We've got a special uh, ministry. Um, many of you heard of Samaritan's Purse, uh, Billy Graham ministry uh, that we're going um, right into them and they're able to take it right into that uh, relief area. Uh, there have been many times that sometimes you give and it doesn't get there, but we wanted to make sure and did our research of people who are getting that money right to them. So this time we're going to ask our officers if they would uh, take charge. Good, morning. Good afternoon, Ebenezer. Uh, we have a gift of love sent in by Sister Priscilla Wallington. And we also have another gift of love sent in by Brother Ron Lenny. Let us bow our heads, please. 
Dear Lord Jesus, uh, first of all, we just want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you for the uh, blessed week we just had, Lord, hearing your word every night, a uh, true man of God, Lord. And we thank you for that word, and we ask that you just help us to apply it to our lives daily. Uh, we ask that you bless those that have to give, bless those that do not have to give. But just bless us all, Lord, and please just keep us and be with us always. These and all things we thank you for in Jesus Christ's name we do pray, Lord. Uh, we'll be led by the ushers from the rear, those of you that can stand. Thank you. of the divine. I wrote that down. I said, I'm going to put that down in my little notebook so I won't ever forget. We have the direct ear of the divine. And so with that being said, we're going to ask Sister Dorothy uh, Dix to come on. She's going to give us our prayer of meditation. Miss Dorothy Dix. She's going to give us our prayer of um, meditation. 
And so you know somebody that needs prayer. I need prayer. You can always pray for me. But each one of us needs prayer. And we have family members that need prayer. So as she prays, pray, pray along with her. God hears all of us at the same time. praise. We come to give you honor because you have been so good to us. We have been so neglectful, but Lord, you say that you are my child and I forgive you. Lord, we just want to say thank you. There are so many here that's asking for prayer. There's so many broken hearts here. So many people here that don't know which way to go. But Lord, I want them to know that they have a God a God that's waiting for them to come to them and say, Lord, help me. Lord, save me. Lord, we just want to say thank you. There is no other name of which we can be saved without the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we call upon that name today. We call upon that mercy. We call upon that blessing. And we call upon you, the one who says come. And Lord, we know that you have stressed out the whole universe. The stars, the moon, and all are in your command, and so are we. And if we call you, say you will come, and you will know when cast down. And that means everyone, everyone that comes, because you are living God, as God that spread the Holy Spirit upon all who ask for it. And Lord, we thank you for this Holy Spirit that keeps us, that holds on to us, and keeps us. Because we know if we have that Holy Spirit, we are saved to the day of redemption. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, I can't thank you enough because so many things have happened in my life. And I give you that praise and I turn everything over to you because other things I cannot handle. So many things that come in my life, Lord, I cannot handle them. But I know you can. There are times when I cannot see the way, but you made a way. Lord, and I say thank you for that. And Lord, you know my heart. You know my heart. And I praise you for all that you've done for me. Because you have been so good to us. And I say I want to thank you. For everyone who's in this building, I'm sure they have a testimony. And they came to you. And I want to thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. We thank you for that Holy Ghost power. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God.
listen while you still can hear. Listen while you still can hear the master's call. The master's call. Bow down while your knees still bend. Bow down while your knees still bend. The master's call. The master's calling. I don't want to run. Bind me to your side. Bind me to your side. Father, we just thank you. And that song is so true, Lord. Help us to hear your voice while we still have time. Now, Father, I pray that maybe there's someone that's here today that doesn't know you. Father, would you touch their hearts today? Would you help them to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised them from the dead and you said they would be saved? Let them know us by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. 
Now, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, but I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Therefore, I welcome your Holy Spirit that's been with us all week long. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you never fail. So we ask you to please teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth. Please make this word so plain, so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed to be like you. Father, I thank you that you'll be in my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding. Finally, Lord, we thank you for your anointing that transforms us from the inside out. We just give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody love Jesus today? Amen. Amen. Would you grab those Bibles or devices? And I want you to go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 today. And I want you to focus in on that third verse. We've been uh, dealing with a series on joy. And uh, God's kind of kept us. And I'll be honest, this scripture, I was planning on uh, getting more scriptures and getting this section. But uh, it was just so rich as God began to minister uh, to my heart. And I believe today that... Um, some of you are going to receive a breakthrough uh, when it comes to joy. Some of you have been battling depression. And the reason I know that, we've taught on that depression, but I, I've sensed it. I've sensed that some people have been struggling. Um, sometimes we kind of go through valleys. You ever just woke up and you just wasn't feeling it? Am I the only one in here? You just wasn't, you wasn't feeling it. You just, just you tried to shake it off, but it was just kind of a cloud that you, you felt like Charlie Brown. You know, it just it would just kind of rain on you and everybody else would have sunshine. But I want to show you some things in the scripture today that we can break through by understanding that no matter what happens in our life, God is faithful. Look at that Philippians 3.3. 3. I love this verse. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Listen to that again. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. I want to speak from a title today, Joy in Knowing Jesus. Joy in Knowing Jesus. And this is part one, because on next Sunday, we're going to get to part two. I thought I was going to be able to encapsulate it, but it was so much in these first verses. So joy in knowing Jesus. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Do, you have joy do you have joy in Jesus? In Jesus. Don't answer that question yet. Don't answer yet. Don't yet. Don't answer. From last Sunday, as we've been dealing with this uh, joy zero, the Sunday before last, uh, we were in 2 Corinthians 5 and 2. Uh, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. 2 Corinthians 5, 3. If indeed having been clothed, we shall now not be found naked. And that's 2 Corinthians 5, 4. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. And we talked about everlasting life. That when we're going through our struggles, we can tap into that everlasting life that's on the inside of us. Points in review to help us in this transition to uh, get this section today. We learned from um, the Sunday previously, inside out, uh, it will not last. It's good to know that whatever you're going through, it will not last. Uh, if you can see it, it's not eternal. Uh, tents are temporary. Amen. Um, there has to be more. An everlasting warranty. I love that. We've got an everlasting warranty, and we have confidence in Christ. Uh, today, as we transition, we move further into the New Testament. We pick up Paul the Apostle, wonderful writer that's used of the Lord. Time frame is AD 62, and um, uh, Paul is on his Macedonia call. Uh, we're on Missionary Sunday that we uh, talk about us outreaching and reaching to others. This is where Paul is. He's in Troas during his second missionary journey and led his ministry into what we're going to deal with today, a place called Philippi. And the conversion, if you remember, of Lydia and others occurred there as he followed the will of God. Uh, Paul and Silas had been beaten. They were going through in prison. But in that jail, they tapped into something. We're talking about the joy series. 
it, they could have complained, they could have belly ached, but they tapped in the fact that they can call on the Lord at any time and God would show up. And because of that, there was a conversion of the Philippian jailer. Uh, just a, a little review, getting up to this third chapter, uh, uh, Paul accounts his present circumstances in that first chapter. Uh, he begins to pray thanksgiving to the Lord. He talks a little bit about his afflictions and how God can use afflictions to change and actually joy can come out of afflictions. And we're going to deal with that some today. Uh, within that second chapter, uh, Paul appeals to us to have the mind of Christ, to actually begin to think about Christ as he's talking to us and talking to the church at that time. And then in this third chapter, as we get into, um, Paul wants us to have knowledge of Christ. Now, this working knowledge of Christ, it actually can change our, uh, our situation and our circumstances, the knowledge of Christ. So we have our situation, our circumstances that are coming. We can believe the situation or the circumstance, or we can have knowledge of God, and now we look at it differently. Let's look at this Philippians 3 and 1. As Paul brings this out, he's built up the congregation. He's speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. He says, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Now, throughout uh, this epistle, he goes over and over again, rejoice in the Lord, no matter what's happening. And so he repeats that again, over and over again. He said, it's not tedious, but I want you to rejoice, but I also want you to know some things. The first point uh, of the day, we need to lift up the Lord. Amen. Lift up the Lord. Now, now, let me explain. So often in our lives, we lift up the circumstance. We lift up the situation. Um, somebody says, how are you doing? You go, oh, Arthur hit me and I'm aching here. I've got a migraine. I had a bad day. My dog is doing bad. We, we lift up the circumstances, but we've got to get to the point when we're asked that, we can say God is good. We can lift up the Lord because when we begin to lift up the Lord, it actually changes the situation that we're in. Warren Wiersbe, he writes this quote. He says, if you cannot rejoice in your circumstances, you can always rejoice in the Lord who controls your circumstances. Fix your attention on him. He may not change your situation, but he will change you. And that is even better. That's got to touch you because we, we do. We have similar situations, but one person goes through it, and I'm telling you, they make everybody suffer. But another person goes through that same situation, and they cause other people to rejoice and to bless God for his goodness and grace. Then Paul, after he gives us this to rejoice, now that rejoice in the Greek, remember, it's talking about joy, but it's saying doing it over and over and over again. It means that we have to grab it. We have to push. And God is that God that's on the inside us via the Holy Spirit that helps us reach past what we're feeling now and still can look to him, which cometh our strength and our, our power in him. Uh, Paul turns and now he says, I, I need to warn you of some stuff. This is key. When you're rejoicing, you cannot forget the stuff that's around you. We're lifting up the Lord. Now, I asked my son, I said, son, I want to use you in the message, and I wanted to get permission, and he said yes, but of course he didn't know what I was going to use him for. So the other day, we were going to a funeral, and I had my son, it was about two-hour drive on both ways, I had my son Benjamin to drive me, and, and, he's, and he's great, he's great, he gets in his seat, he puts everything up, and, and we're on, we're on the highway, we're going, and I'm going to get some study and some prayer in and some meditation, and, and, and I said, just, just stay right here, the car pretty much drive itself, just keep going, but every now and then, he would have to move over to get around a car, come back in, but he has this issue um, when he's when he's moving over, if it's going to his right, there's a problem that occur. You got to look at your blind spot. And, I, and I've warned him over and over again. When you look at your blind spot, you still got to drive forward. And he has this issue. And, and I have to warn him. I'm like, I want to rejoice. I want to be happy. I'm happy that you're driving. But the problem is every time you look at your blind spot, he turns the wheel. 
He was excited about driving and he looks in his blind spot, but when he turns his head, his hands go the opposite way. And I'm like, son, I'm like, son, I'm glad that there's nobody over there, but you're missing the car that's right there. And so often in our joy, we forget that there are situations that are around us. And when we're rejoicing, we got to keep our eyes on God and we got to keep going straight. Let me show you uh, Philippians 3, 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. I mean, We talk about joy in knowing Jesus. This whole process, he goes, rejoice, rejoice. It's not tediously. And then the next verse, he goes, bam. Here's a point. Beware, beware, beware. The enemy is stepping up his attacks. Anybody sense that? He's taking a, a step up his attack in our government, uh, all around the world, even in our lives. And that's why I want to get across to you. We've got to tap into this joy because the enemy and the demons are going to come in our lives. And sometimes that cloud is going to come our way. And we don't feel like rejoicing. We don't feel like having joy. But you've got to know the devil is a lie. You cannot be determined again how you feel and how your situation is going because you don't know how quickly that situation can turn around. You don't know that you're on the pinnacle of a breakthrough, and that's good news to know. I I, I am blessed. Mother Gladney, uh, she came in here, and and she's been grieving for a long time, missing her husband, and and, and she's been struggling with things in her, her body. But I looked at it this morning, and I looked at that lipstick, and I said, oh my God, she got her groove back. Because no matter what you're going through no matter what the struggles there's sometimes you're like I don't feel like it but I'm going to get me a a bright lipstick and I'm going to put it on my lips and I'm going to act like I've got it going on I'm going to act like that everything is okay and that's what faith is all about some of you need to look at yourself in your mirror I don't feel like rejoicing right now but I'm going to put me some um, some good lipstick on I'm going to put me a nice dress on and put me a suit on and I'm going to give God some praise because he alone is worthy. Beware. Beware, beware. Dogs in the Greek were evil. They were evil at that time. They were prowling dogs, scavengers, vicious, flea-ridden. But Paul said, in your rejoicing, in your walking through, know that the enemy is still going to come. That's what this series has been about. I'm I'm, I'm teaching you about joy, not to say that the devil is not there, but that you can have joy even when the devil shows up. These these dogs, scavengers, vicious, flea-ridden. Paul was referring to the false teachers who boasted in religion rather than relationship with Christ. Religion will always lead you to depression. Religion, going through the motions. You, you look, I've been to all kinds of churches, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, and when you allow religion to lead you, there's no excitement, there's no joy there, there's no process within there. But when you put God first, everything's changed. Did you know you can shout all day? That's, that can be religion. You, you can shout, you can do your dance, you can do all of that, but you can still go into depression. But when you put Jesus first, he'll change everything in you. These false teachers were focused on religion. They had disregarded the blood of Jesus. Anybody know about the blood of Jesus? They had disregarded it, pushed it to the side, and they had replaced it by their own works. Talking about joy and knowing Jesus. When you replace Christ with just coming to church, you got a problem. When you replace Christ by having a position in the church, you got a problem. When you replace Christ by being a pastor in the church or doing certain things in the church, you've missed it. Because it's about our relationship with Jesus. They lifted up the law instead of growing in grace. How often have we gotten caught up in church? You just get into the the same old, same old, just church. You you go and you go, well, we're at church. 
kind of kind of look at your, your watch and you go through that process over and over again. We hear, but I don't want you to everywhere you go that you realize you can have Christ. Not just church. Not just when you get here, but if we can get to the point of realizing I can praise him in the parking lot. We've got to change our mindset because God has been good, not just here in Ebenezer, but on the outside of Ebenezer. When we were on our cars, did you know God kept us from head on collisions? He didn't want us to get here today. He wanted that depression cloud to bring you down, but you you had a breakthrough already. You got to this place, and now God is speaking into your life. It was about outward signs to them rather than their hearts being circumcised. How tender is your heart today? Or has the enemy hit you so hard that your heart has become callous? You can't feel it like you used to feel. You know, when you first got saved, man, somebody could just, a little tear come down, and you start shouting. Testimony served. You, you were the first one there, and you always had a testimony. But over the years, has the enemy hit you in such a way that now you have a perpetual depression that you carry around? Oh, you pull it through when you're at church. Oh, you you so holy. You got your stuff together. But when you go home, this is your routine. You come in your house, and all of a sudden, you pick up the gloom cloud again. And you know that because you go to your favorite chair and you sit there and you cut on the dumb TV and you allow it to dumb you down and numb you down because you can't get past the cloud. You don't talk to anybody. You just sit there. You don't have any smiles on your face. You just sit there. You go through the same thing over and over again and then expect to come to church on Sunday and get refueled. But you got to find your own fuel. You got to be able to seek the Lord in your house and tell the devil, you got to flee from here. The same joy that I get on Sunday, I'm going to have joy in my house. If there's a dark cloud of your house, pray it out. I didn't, I didn't come talk a whole bunch about this. The circumstance, have you ever gone into somebody's house and you just felt a doubt? You walk in and it's just like, God, what happened in here? Who, who died? You ever gone in a church like that? It happens all the time. And I, I determine, and sometimes we say, man, if we had a better choir or a better praise team, then that cloud could come over. No, when the cloud comes, I get, a, I get more excited. I get more excited because when the cloud comes, the devil must be trying to take something from me. And so I go, you know what? Bring it on. Bring it on your best shout. And so if everybody else feels down, I said, I'm going to be up because I know when I think about the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for just me. Let me show you in the scriptures. They were focused on those outward signs of the law. God spoke to the Israelites in Deuteronomy 10, 16. Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and not be stiff-necked any longer. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Joy in knowing Jesus. When we are, our hearts are circumcised, now we want to reach out. And now we're not, I taught on this, egocentric. It's not about us, but it's about blessing other folks. I, I learned this in school. If you smile, somebody else will smile. Let me test it right now. Look at your neighbor. Give him a big smile. See, no, no, some of y'all are like, oh, you got a Jack Bell smile. But it made you smile, right? And some of you didn't even want to smile. You just, you just, I saw some of you like. It does. Some of your teeth was loose. You said, oh, Lord, I hope they don't, I hope they don't pop out. But when you smile, you don't know what that did for your neighbor right now. Just, just a little smile. They were broke, busted, and disgusted. But because they saw your smile. They had a breakthrough because what the devil meant for their harm, now God was able to turn it for their good. Philippians 3.3. 3. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. That's capitalized. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Can I give you a point? Get this. This will change your life. Christ is all we need. 
Christ. You ain't like, no, I need a car. Christ is all we need. I need good clothes. I need money. No, Christ is all we need. If you lose everything, and I don't want anybody to lose everything, but if you lose everything and still have Christ, as we grow in him, we understand more that you cannot trust the flesh. Can you touch your flesh? Touch it. You, you can't trust it. Has your flesh ever told you you were hungry when you just got through eating that golden corral? Has that ever happened to you? You, you know you fool. You can feel your belly. It's just, it's just popping out. But a commercial come on with a big, nice burger. All of a sudden you go, you know what? I can eat that. You can't trust your flesh. You cannot trust your flesh. Your flesh will turn on you. It'll do things. We've got under. He said, we rejoice in Christ Jesus, and we don't have confidence in the flesh. Theologian Henson, he writes this, we have not placed confidence in anything of fleshly nature. Christians expect nothing from the flesh. The flesh is always flesh. It is always corrupt. It is never improved. It is never changed. One may educate it or reform it or give it religion, but it is still flesh. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8 and 8. You can't. You can't. You've got to get past that. You can teach your flesh not to do certain things. You can. Uh, Christ is on the inside of us, but you put that flesh in certain situations. Some of y'all looking at me again. Some of y'all would never curse here in Ebenezer. But the right situation and circumstances, if that hammer hits your finger, if you have not reformed the flesh enough and educated it, Brother Rick, can I talk to you? If you, if you haven't reformed it enough, you reformed it at certain, but when that, when that hammer hits your finger, if it's not it, the flesh will cry out some stuff. You're like, where I get that from? The flesh. You, GG, you act like you did that yesterday. No joy, joy in knowing Jesus. Let, let me show you. These are the last verses. I'm going to pull it all together for you because I'm excited about this. Philippians 3, 4 through 7. Listen to this. Paul says, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Philippians 3, 7. I love this one. But what things were gained to me? These I have counted loss for Christ. And there's, there's so much in this chat. Please come back on next Sunday. But I want to pull this portion because I, I didn't want you to miss this. He goes, okay, if you want to talk about the flesh, he said, I have a lot of fleshly attainments. I've, I've done this, Hebrew of the Hebrew, a uh, 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 tribe of Benjamin, all of this, Pharisee of Pharisee, zeal. I had all that. I got the degrees. I got stuff when people look at me and they look at my pedigree, they go, Paul, you were somebody. He said, I, 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 I tried my whole life to be somebody in people's eyes and that my flesh would be exalted because the flesh likes to be exalted. The flesh likes to be applauded. It likes to be lifted up. But please understand, he said, but when I, when I came to Jesus, that seven earth, but what things were gained to me these I've counted. Spent my whole life trying to be somebody, trying to prove myself. But when I finally came to know Jesus, all that time of doing that, trying to prove myself, I pushed it to the side. Because now Christ showed up. Here's, here's a point. We're going to pull this together. Assets versus liabilities. Assets versus liability. We put stock in so many other things in our lives. A car, a houses, clothes, food, job, certain relationships, our hair. 
Yeah, one, one of the brothers today, I, I looked at his wife's hair, and I said, Woo, that's some nice hair. He said, yeah, it cost me a whole bunch. <laughs> he did. He said, that's that Peruvian hair right there. It used to be on somebody's head, now it's on her head. We do, we put stock in all of those things. Our makeup, what church we a part of. Yeah, we put all of that. Somebody asks you, you know, how's your day going? Who you? You're like, I'm a, I'm a member of Ebenezer Baptist Church. I'm glad that you're excited about Ebenezer, but that's not enough. That, that's not enough. I'm a deacon or I'm a pastor or I'm an apostle. That's not enough. What church, what people think of us. It's kind of having a ledger book. And in that ledger book, we open it up and we decide we're going to write down. We're going to decide what our assets are and what our liabilities are. So we begin to write. We go, okay, I got a car now, and I've got a job now, and we're adding it up, and we're adding up, and we think we're somebody. We, we got a degree now, got our bachelor's degree, and then we go back, we get our master's degree, and then we get our doctor's degree, and then we start getting designer clothes, and we get nice shoes, and we're adding, adding up the ledger, but all that adding up, we're still depressed. So we think, we think with ourselves, man, I, I got this. Maybe it, was, maybe it was the type of car that I needed. If I can get me a BMW, if I can get me a Mercedes, and we're, we're adding all this stuff up. And so we get, we get to that Mercedes, and we go, you know what? It's, it's, it's not enough. I'm still depressed. I've still got that cloud. And so what we do, we get the upgrade to the Mercedes. Now we don't want the little sport thing. We want the big one because we want everybody to know we only got two people in the house, and we can seat six or seven people in our car. But we want them to know that we have arrived. And we add it all up and we add it all up. And then when we sit down and we look at our ledger, we go, if I could just get some more money. And so we work longer hours. We're 40 plus and we move to another job and we do all this and we're adding it up. But we still come home and we're still broke, busted and disgusted. Let me tell you a secret. Put a line on that ledger. Have all of that, and then I want you to write Jesus on the other side. I, when you put Jesus, that J-E-S-U-S, on the other side, and you begin to compare to all that stuff, I'm telling you, you'll find out that it's not about the things that you possess, but it's all about the God that you serve. I'm so glad today when I put Christ up against all the attainments of this world that I count them as nothing, even as Paul the Apostle. Well, I, I want you to come back because there's so much to this scripture, but please know that's why the cross is so special to me. That's why every Sunday I got to talk about the cross because please understand that's what changes everything. I could give you a nice pep talk. I could talk about how you can have, you know, a little bit of happiness, but that's not what I need in a dark world like this. The fact that Jesus would cry out for me on my behalf, he would be betrayed on my behalf, he would take a beating for me on my behalf. I'd like to end this with a powerful song by Loretta Lynn. She said they bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior so pure and free from sin. They said crucify him, he's the blame. Upon his precious head they placed a crown of thorn. They laughed and said but Behold the king. They struck him and they cursed him and they mocked his holy name. All along he suffered everything. When they nailed him to the cross, his mother stood by. He said, she said, woman, behold thy son. He cried, I thirst for water, but they gave him none to drink. Then the sinful work of man was done. To the howling mob he yielded. He did not for mercy cry. The cross of shame he took along. And when he cried, it's finished. He gave himself to die. Salvation's wondrous plan was done. But I'm so glad for this today. This is why I really got joy in knowing Jesus. He could have called 10 thousand angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you and me. That's why I got so much joy today. Because on the cross of Calvary, he did give up the ghost. On the cross of Calvary, they did peel his body off that cross. On the cross of Calvary, we find him stuffed into a cold tomb. But there ought to be some folks here today. Oh, he stayed there the first day. He stayed there the second day. But I don't care how you feel today. He got up on the third day with all power and good. 
I dare you right now to dig deep on the inside and give God your best praise because we've got joy. Come on to your feet. Oh, God is good. God is so good. On your worst day, think about the cross. He died for me. He was burned for me. But he overcame it. Three days. Man, that'll take you out of that cloud of depression. As you're on your feet, when our intercessors, our ministers will come, because some of you got your breakthrough right now. If God spoke to you in that message, first salvation, salvation. And this is for our ministers, our intercessors. We want to make sure that you're saved. If you're saved, thank God. But some of you are battling some stuff right now. There are clouds in your home. There are clouds in your life. And you're wondering, why can't I get past this? Why can't I get past this? Some of you need to come up and intercede for a family member. They keep going through the same old, same old. I'm telling you, this is the time. So if you've got somebody in your life that you, you need to pray for, would you come and bring them to the altar right now? I want them to have joy in Jesus. If it's you, don't be ashamed. Come on forward. You've been struggling with this thing over and over again. Today can be your breakthrough. I'm telling you, God, if God would do it for me, he'll do it for you. Salvation. Need somebody to pray for you. Intercession. Or you need to intercede for somebody. Bring them to the altar today. Maybe there's someone in your life. You know they should have been here. And you're going, man, I wish such and such would have been here to hear this message today. Well, you're here. Man, bring them to the altar right now and take that message back with you and go. You can go point by point. You're like, pastor, minister us from Philippians chapter 3. You can go line upon line, precept upon precept, and they can sense and feel the same thing that you're feeling. Why? Because it's not about me. It's about God's word. God's word. It destroys yokes. It breaks yokes. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. I want to give you time. If you're here today, come on to the altar. God is always. God is faithful. Final invitation. If you need a church home, you've been struggling. Maybe it's fear. You're like, man, I can't walk up there. People are going to look at me. They're already looking at you. You need to do God's will. Man, we want to be here for you, Christian experience or by letter. If you're here today, you want to be a member of Ebenezer Baptist Church, that covering that God has just blessed us to have here. We invite you here. Man, if you, if you need me to come get you, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. I, I'll, I'll grab you and I'll drag you up. Our intercessors will be here to get you. Simply because we want to make sure you've got a covering. Will there be one? Salvation, intercessors are up here. You need to intercess for somebody, intercede for somebody, some struggles. You need a church home. You feel God pulling on your heart. Would you come? God is faithful. God is faithful. He's always, always been by my side. He has always. Always. Mother Gladney, come on up here. I want you to pray. You done got me excited about Jesus. Oh, he's an overcomer. Oh, when my friends would walk away and turn back on me, he stood. God has always stood by my side. I don't know about you, but God has always stood by my side. Oh, gracious and eternal God. Oh, Lord, we come today on this way as we know how. Thanking you, God, for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you, Father, for how that you touched us this morning and you woke us up, Father, able us to get up, closed in our right minds, Able us to make our way to this house of worship one more time. God, we thank you for all your goodness, oh Lord. Some come for one thing and some come for another. But oh God, you know 
our hearts. You know what we need, oh God. Because whatever it is, all we got to do is just to ask you, Father. You said to ask in your name, and you will be given it to us, oh Lord. So we ask, Father, for the healings of our bodies. Sometimes we have sickness. Sometimes we have troubles. We have all sorts of things wrong with us, Father. Your word, oh God, if we just keep it hid in our hearts and to call upon you, oh God. Lord, you are so good. You are such a gracious God. You said you are Alpha and Omega, uh, the beginning and the end, the first and last. So all we got to do is just worship you, Father, with our whole hearts, oh Lord Jesus. And you will always come to our rescue. Thank you, Father, for those that have come to this altar. Lord, you know what they need, even before they ask you for it, Lord Jesus. For you are the greatest God. There's no one like you, Father. Nowhere, nowhere we can search forever. But you are our great God, Lord Jesus. You can heal us, Father. So whatever the problem is, oh dear God, let us just bring it to you while we have this altar today, Father God. For you are our Savior, Father. We thank you. You said, Lord, that there's no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, God. Oh, Lord, help us just to call upon you, Jesus. Trust you, Father, with our whole hearts and just to lean on you, Lord. So whatever it is, just lean on you, Father. Uh, you said for us to do that, God. You will heal us. You will take care of us in the times of trouble. No matter what, what it is, God, your grace, oh, Lord Jesus, your grace that has brought us this far and your mercy. You said it lasts forever, longer than anything that is wrong with us, God. All we got to do is just to believe and trust in you, Father. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you kept us just one more day. One more day that you have spared our lives, Lord. Be with us, Father. Keep us as we even join from this place, Father, on our way back to our many different places, God. But that highway out there is so dangerous, Lord. We need you, Father. We need just to call up on you. Every time we leave our houses and get into our cars, we need to say, Lord, guide us where we have to go and get us back safely. So I thank you, Father. Oh, Father God, for this pastor, God who stands here day, Sunday in and Sunday out, all during the week, oh, dear God, preaching and teaching your word. Thank you, God, for sanctifying him. Sending him out, oh, Lord, to stand on the wall, calling up on your name, telling us, Lord, oh, God, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Be with us, Lord, and keep us. Father, we love you so much. God, I love you. I love you, Lord, because sure enough, you walk with me, and you talk with me, and you do tell me I am your Lord. I know you know my name. Oh, yes, you do, Lord. You know my name. Many, many, many other days in the night, God. You know what I have been going through. God, it just seems like I go through a fog sometimes. But I know you're able to move that out of the way. For well, you're doing it every day for me, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God, for strengthening me day by day, Lord. It's been, it's been rough, but I owe it all to you. I, my trust, my hope, my tears that I shed is not tears that though I have no hope because my hope is in you, Jesus. So, Father, I ask that you would just be with us. Keep us, Lord, and guide us from day to day. I thank you. These and other blessings I ask in your precious name, Jesus, the Savior of this world. Amen and amen. Thank you, God. You just pray. And the Lord will make a way. He'll make a way. Oh, he stood. He stood. Right there. Right there. My son. As you're on your feet and we prepare to close, I want to give a shout out um, just for God blessing Ebenezer uh, with Mother Lucreta Goins. If you were here doing our revival, 
I think it was a Thursday, we celebrated 100 years of her life, and uh, we were excited. She uh, testified and uh, gave us encouragement. Uh, I'm glad she made it, because we had been talking about it last time. I said, she ain't there yet. 99 and one half on due, but she made it. She's 100 plus years old today. Mother Kriya Goins, she's sitting down right over there. So um, during the day when we leave, if you, she got yellow on. She looking real good. She got a red cap on. And so she just, uh, just loving Jesus. Her daughter um, um, actually sent me a text this morning. There should be an article about her life today, uh, celebrating 100 years in the paper. So if you get the paper, you still get the paper, um, please, please look at that article and celebrate with Ebenezer. Uh, we've, got, we've got a lot of people with longevity here. So if you want to live long, uh, drink out of the water fountain here at Ebenezer. Uh, it, it might help you. Father, we thank you for joy in Jesus. We thank you that our circumstances are changed, God, because our outlook is in you. You. God, thank you that there's no more clouds at our house today. We're going to go in. We're going to rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the blood. A change happens today. Joy in Jesus. We leave this place. Let us not leave your presence. Order our steps. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you look at your name and say, Joy?